Welcome to the Show Up Dev Podcast. In this special episode of Marriage on the Line, Lifeline, Jenny and I delve into the crucial topic of being on the same page with your spouse. Building on the discussions from our previous episode on introduction to discipline, we will explore how alignment with your partner goes beyond just discipline and extends into various aspects of life. But before we dive into today's conversation, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for their support. This episode of the Show Up Dad is brought to you by Tallman Equipment, the leading provider of high-quality tools and equipment for the power line industry. Visit tallmanequipment.com to explore their wide range of products and discover how they can help. Additionally, I'd like to give a special shout out to the Show Up Dad Foundation, an organization dedicated to supporting fathers in their journey towards becoming the best versions of themselves. Through their workshops, resources, and community, the Show Up Dad Foundation empowers dads to show up, be present, and make a positive impact on their children's lives. To learn more about their mission and how you can get involved, visit the showupthatfoundation.org. Join us as we unravel the significance of being in sync with our spouse on matters such as faith, finances, family direction, health choices, and more. Tune in for valuable insights and engaging conversations on this episode of Marriage on the Line, Lifeline. Welcome, Jenny. Hi. So excited about this conversation. Yeah, it's much needed. I know that we kind of like, like on the introduction, we kind of touched base on it. Mm-hmm. in the last episode that we did on disciplining introduction to discipline yes and i thought that we needed to elaborate more on how important it is for spouses to be on the same page right yes yes definitely kind of like how we talked in our last episode about discipline how it can really confuse your children if you're not on the same page and it can cause a chaotic environment right but it even extends past that And it can cause a chaotic marriage, which basically turns into a very unstable environment. And it becomes very difficult to raise children and to have a happy marriage in that kind of situation. Absolutely. Your house definitely is going to be without peace. And that's what we all want. We want a home where there's peace, right? Not World War III, right? We don't want our homes to look like Beirut on a Saturday night. Right. Yes. And if you get on the same page with your spouse on a lot of these topics that we're going to discuss today, you will find a more peaceful situation. There won't be so many surprises where you're like, wait, what? We didn't discuss those things or I feel strongly about this. Or there can be some even unspoken expectations of your spouse Mm -hmm. or even that you have for yourself that you haven't discussed. And it can really just, you know, solve a lot of conflict that might happen down the road. Absolutely. So let's just jump right into this, babe. We're going to talk about faith. Faith is a big deal. Obviously, before you got even married, you guys should already have come together and discussed about how you're going to raise your family and what faith, if you have faith, you're going to fall into, right? Yeah. And what type of beliefs you're going to implement into your family and you're going to rely upon. We're starting with faith because faith is the foundation of your belief system. Mm -hmm. This is the foundation of basically how your life is going to go. And it also is such a big part of who you are as a person. Yes. Right. And think about it too. Like if you are rejecting your spouse's beliefs, they're going to take it personally, right? They're going to, take it like hey man it's a rejection of me right because that like you're saying that's your foundation that's how you believe that's a part of it yes yes and often your faith uh really determines your morals values your character and that kind of what makes up who you are as a person yeah that's what we're trying to show our children yes yes so that's cool, man. So let's go ahead and get into the first question I want to ask you, Jenny, is how do we navigate any differences in our beliefs or interpretations of our faith to find common ground? So I think the best way that couples can really navigate differences is, I know it sounds like cheesy, but write a list of the things that are most important to you mm-hmm. concerning your faith or your belief system. Like if you really want to celebrate Great Christmas because that was a huge part of your upbringing, but your spouse happens to not really care for Christmas, but you really feel like that's important. I think um, each 
each person, each individual in the relationship should come with their list of the most important things to them in their faith if you have differing faiths. Uh, and then find common ground and make small compromises for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have differing faith, there are going to be some tense situations are where, you know, it's going to be hard to give up one thing or, yeah. but both couple, both people should not be so rigid, right? Right. They shouldn't be so rigid and one person shouldn't be getting everything they want and the other person doesn't get anything because then that's going to cause resentments down the road. So it's really going to be a very unique conversation mm -hmm. between each couple. And really, it's going to have to be something where you just sit and talk calmly about it. And I recommend doing like 90 minutes and then stopping at that point in time. If you haven't resolved it, you just write down on your list which things you didn't resolve and then return to it maybe a, le a week later. We don't want people marathoning over these conversations yeah. and it turning into unproductive arguments. Yeah, and it, it's true because, I mean, one of the first two things that causes people to to get heated, right, is faith and politics. Yes. So that's that's important, and that's why we're talking. That's why Jenny gave you guys pointers to not marathon because we understand how people's beliefs, man, that can drive someone wild. Yes, it's a very passionate conversation yes. to have. So I do think that, you know, if you notice or recognize that somebody's triggered in your conversation, mm -hmm. choose to take a break, but take a break with the intention within 24 to 48 hours to finish that conversation. It's good to put a timer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're feeling triggered 30 minutes into the conversation, stop the timer. Wait 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes time away from a conversation can give you clarity. Yes. And then go back and restart that timer for the rest of the 90 minutes. And maybe you guys can resolve it that way. But like my husband said at the beginning of this conversation, we really do hope you are having these conversations before you get married. Mm -hmm. And that you are marrying somebody that has similar faith and beliefs, because that is going to make the easiest, smoothest road for the, the couple and the family. Yeah, the family. I'm glad you said that, babe, because one of the things I remember, even this is just being a child, right? Mm -hmm. Going to my friend's house, their parents had different beliefs. The mother was raised Catholic. Father Jehovah's Witness. The mother wanted gifts, wanted to decorate. The father, who is the head of the household, didn't want none of that. And I remember seeing how torn the kids were when they would come to my house and we had a Christmas tree up, we had gifts underneath it. And I could see it in the face. And I was nine years old, right? And I could still see that. And I remember my heart breaking for that. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask him, man, you guys don't get, I didn't understand at the time because I'd ask him, I was like, man, you guys don't celebrate Christmas. You don't get gifts. And they would answer, you know, very sad and be like, no, unfortunately, no, we, we don't. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So these are important questions, guys, because you don't understand how it's going to impact your children. Mm -hmm. So yes. we need to be talking about it, right? What an important illustration you painted for us there, because I can really see how that could cause a very confusing situation for mm -hmm. the children growing up. And the enemy is the author of confusion, confusion mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that is why the Bible says that we should be equally yoked mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, when you don't stand together, your home can be divided and it will lead to destruction. And I think if you're the spouse that is really missing out on something that's very important to you in your faith, your faith, and you don't get that joy of seeing your children grow up with a Christmas tree, mm -hmm. even, and that was like a dream of yours, um, that could be heartbreaking. And I could see how that could, the, you know, Satan could come in and, plant a root of bitterness yeah. in your heart over something like that and, and tell you that your husband or your spouse or your wife is the enemy because they are keeping you from this joy. Yeah. We don't process it as who the true enemy is, like yeah. you said, right? Mm -hmm. We process it as this person does not want me 
to have this. Right. And what does that really tell them? This person doesn't really care about what I want. Right. And I'm not valuable or something like that. Yes. And that's. It it could lead to a whole crazy different path that we don't want you guys to have to go through or experience. right? Right. Right. So, honey, how can we create a sacred space or time within our relationship to honor and nourish our shared faith and commitment? Mm, That's a big one. Uh, Let's see here. So sacred space or time within our relationship. um, I believe as the head of household, the father, right? We have to set down those times. And when I say that, I think it's important for fathers to be able to disciple their children, right? We understand about discipline. We talked about in the last subject, but before discipline, there has to be discipleship. So it's very important that we create that time to spend not only with each other in prayer or even praying at it as simple as a prayer over our dinner, right? Mm -hmm. Or even let's take it a step forward, putting the children to bed, Mm -hmm. praying with them, Mm -hmm. right? That is so important because you're instilling into your children that you are actually walking the walk. You are actually, Mm -hmm. you believe what you say, what you're telling them, right? Mm -hmm. And you're emulating that to your children. So I think that's very, very important to to carve that time out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and not only that, it just brings stability in the home when you do that, right? Because you're sharing what you believe to your children, and it's it's a it's easier for them to understand why yeah. you're making the rules that you have yes. or things like that. And it also, I think, it also gives them a foundation on where they can go if they feel like they're in trouble. Absolutely. In and, a situation. Yeah, and especially when they see, a prime example would be like, they see me reading my Bible, right? If I tell them that they need to have Bible study or, or, or you know, they need to be the importance of reading their Bible, if they've never seen that in me, if I'm not emulating that, they're not going to receive that. Like, well, why would you do that, Dad? Mm-hmm. Or, or why would we do that when you don't even do it? Mm-hmm. That, right mm-hmm. but i think it's, it's 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 hugely important right it gives them that foundation like we talked about mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah i could also see how that extends also into the marriage too because mm-hmm. if one person is very adamant about this and this and this in in their faith but they aren't practicing it mm-hmm. on a regular basis but yet they are like rigid i will not compromise on it but yet they don't practice it it's it's very difficult to to support that or you know even vice versa if somebody says they want to be closer to god and all these things Mm -hmm. and then they are not doing anything about it it's hard to support you yeah to do it you know what i mean oh absolutely and it like i said gentlemen it's it's not hard start taking your kids to church on sunday Mm -hmm. start there right Mm -hmm. simple like we have our tradition to where we go, they, our children know Saturday night, they're going to go to bed early because why? Rest assured, church is where we're going to be on Sunday. Yes. Right? Yes. And also that comes down to even showing the importance of, of how, how big faith is in our, our relationship by telling our children, man, if you guys have sports on Sunday, guess what? You're going to go to church. If you have a game on Sunday, guess what? You have to go to church. Mm-hmm. If you have a, a prior engagement guess what church comes first church always has to come first before everything mm-hmm. you know and i think that's important yeah i i think it's it's very important and then there are times too where if it's something really special and it's like every once in a while your faith in your family should be strong enough to mm-hmm. where if you miss just every once in a while because of a special event it's okay. Yeah, of course. I mean, and that goes with walking the walk, talking, yeah. walking and talking the same walk, right? Absolutely. But also at the same token, right? I think it's important to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. You have to have those conversations. You can't just say, oh, yeah, they're going to go to a birthday party or such and such. And it's your, your 15th birthday party in a row that you're missing church. Right. No, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that right. at all. Right. I agree. I agree. I I do have a question to piggyback mm-hmm. off of that, though, too, is how important is it to have heartfelt prayers with your kids rather than just I'm going through the motions every night? 
Well, your kids can read you. They know when you're, you're, for lack of better words, uh, blowing smoke up their butt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're, they, they know, you know, and if you're in a hurry because you're on your phone and you're saying our father, Martin heaven, I will be the name and you're, you're scrolling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're going to think it's a joke too. Cause you don't even believe in what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's important to actually be engaged. We call that being intentional mm-hmm. at our foundation. You need to be engaged and you got to be intentional with those prayers. Mm-hmm. You can't just continuously go over the same one. Right. Um, the Our Father, for example, was something that Jesus gave us as an example. It wasn't meant to say over and over again. Right, right. Right. I think it's important, too, to understand that prayer is an opportunity for a lot of intim- intimate moments. Very. Especially between a husband and a wife. Mm, absolutely. What I've learned from praying for you, it actually changes my heart. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Lord God, please help this woman because she's driving <laughs> me insane or whatever. It's actually my heart that's being softened to be able to accept what I cannot change, right? Yeah. Um, to see her perspective and vice versa. You know, a lot of times I get husbands who ask me, man, I, I'm praying for my spouse, but she needs to change and this and this. And I, I just kind of laugh. It's like, okay, awesome. I'm glad you're praying. Yeah. Guess what? In that process, God's going to change you. What a great thing to be able to teach our children, too. Absolutely. Because I know that when you're young, it's easy to be upset. Yeah. <laughs> about things that happen in your world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. As a little kid. <laughs> well, well, you don't understand. You're still looking through that lens of, oh, okay, why didn't I get this or whatever, right? And it's important yeah. for you to teach your children that it's okay to go to God. When we don't understand, it's okay to go to God, yeah. right? When things are out of our control. Who do you turn to? You got to turn to God. Yes. Right. And nothing is more powerful than seeing your father on his knees. Right. I tell you what, man, that's a beautiful picture to see children seeing their dad humble themselves Mm -hmm. towards God. I think that is one of the most valuable gifts you can give your children. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. Right on, man. Well, let's uh, go on to finances, Jenny. Oh, man. (laughs) These are some really touchy topics. And I know that, uh, you know, if uh, finances can cause a lot of stress in in a marriage, in a family. And if you're not on the same page, Mm -hmm. oh, it can be hard. It can be really hard. Yeah, well, how can we establish open and honest communication about our finances to ensure that transparency and trust in our relationship? How can we do that? Oh, man, I know we're in like a modern age and a lot of people think that it's a great idea to have separate finances. But I feel that separate finances are kind of like the devil's playground. And I don't say that in a rude way or, you know, if if you have a method that's really working for your family or you have businesses and things like that, I understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you are managing your separate bank account and your spouse is managing their separate bank account and you don't have access to see what each other is spending their money on and stuff like that, Uh, there are just so many temptations in the world. And I really believe that our spouse is there to help us be accountable. Yes. And when you share finances, you have to kind of come to your spouse and be like, I want to make this big purchase. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you guys can look together and be like, okay, let's see how we can do it. Does this fit into the budget? Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we want our separate bank accounts so that way we can do whatever we want and nobody holds us accountable. I like that. No, you're absolutely right. Right. But I think that that's really not the path to maturity. Explain. It's not the path to maturity and growth. God wants us to mature and grow and develop our character. And if it's very difficult to answer to the sp- to your spouse, mm-hmm. the person that you've chosen to live your life with. Uh, it's, you know, you are kind of just choosing to remain a child instead of go forth, be in front of that person and say, this is really what I want. I want to purchase this. I want to be buying this. You know, also 
if you have separate accounts, sometimes it's easier to buy sneaky things that maybe you shouldn't be doing or spending your money on things that you shouldn't be doing. Maybe you're a closet alcoholic and your spouse doesn't know because yeah. you're buying beer all the time and you guys don't have the same account mm -hmm. and they don't know that you're buying all this, oh, yeah, all this alcohol stuff. or you know what I'm saying? So I feel like being on the same page with your finances is really important. Absolutely. Being transparent is really important. I remember just even just being on the road and stuff like that and just having guys I worked with, man, they were so, this is back in the days where they would give you a heart check for, uh, for, um, uh, or a substance pay, right? Um, mm -hmm. Per diem. Per diem. Yeah. I remember they used to give us per diem. Well, yes. They used to give us a hard check per diem instead of adding it into our account, right? Our direct deposits. This is when they used to give you hard checks. And those guys were so adamant about that because they would always want to hide that from their wife. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, I get to spend this on whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those were bad habits. Um, I can remember numerous times where I had buddies who were, had you know nose problems <laughs> and want to be my nose problems they like to do a lot of drugs you know yeah. what i mean and they're buying that and hiding that from their spouse mm -hmm. you know so i can definitely see how having those separate bank accounts is going to create problems right yeah it can enable enable absolutely a lot of bad habits i mean even for women sometimes we oh, want to yeah. just be shopping all the time you know what i mean and uh and not only that, but when you separate your bank accounts, how do you come together and bring that money together and mm -hmm. then choose to really uh, pay for all the things together unless you've decided that you're, it's not my money, it's not your money, it's our money. Mm -hmm. Like, you know no, what I mean? And, and also, too, it, it relaxes us as men when we're working and we're adding to the bank account. If I can trust to know that you're going to take care of the bills you're not going to be out there spending all the hard-earned money that mm -hmm. I did for our family, right? And I know that I can trust you in that area. I mean, that's a huge relief on us as men. Right. Right? I know of so many horror stories where the man is out working, providing for his family, sending money home to the wife, and she has a closet gambling problem. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, the house is getting foreclosed. Right. And he's like, what the heck? I've been sending you money. Right. Well, it's so interesting because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Yeah. And so that's why I say this transparency can actually grow you into maturity mm -hmm. because God wants to reveal what's really going on in your heart and fix it. Mm -hmm. And God uses our spouse to help us grow, even though sometimes it feels like sandpaper. <laughs> 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 the reality is, is unless there's somebody there that truly loves you and has the spine to be able to say, hey, what are you spending money on? That's going to actually cause you to think twice, like, why do I need to spend so much money at the casino? Why do mm -hmm. I need to spend so much money on alcohol? What is going on inside of me? Yeah, that I am spending money in this way that ultimately, because when you are spending a lot of money and you know it's wrong, it causes you shame. Yeah, that's and that's why you get angry when questioned. When questioned yeah. about it, and that's why people kind of like to keep separate accounts. Yeah, because because they don't want to face that shame. Yeah, they don't exactly. They don't want to face that shame. They want to be held accountable. And face it, it's like having a a scab right wound that's there mm -hmm. and you just keep pulling it off and you got to face it right and it hurts yeah and the reality is is man when you can work together financially and you can get on the same page and you can create a budget and you guys can discuss you know is this budget working for us where do we need to alter this budget yeah. all these things you can actually become very strong and powerful in your marriage and very just Free. Yes, it's so amazing because then you can decide together, oh, we're going to take this vacation. We're going to save together and take this vacation. We're going to accomplish this goal. This is part of our dreams. Mm -hmm. We want to do this. Um, and it's so important to be on the same page with those things. And when you can accomplish that as a man, right, that's why we always feel very comfortable at work when we accomplish a goal, right? And mm -hmm. if you're doing that with your spouse and you're accomplishing this goal, mm -hmm. what is that called? That's called 
uh, is it oxytocin bonding, right? Yeah, I I forget the word, but there's yeah. a different one. There's a, <laughs> anyhow, when a man is able to accomplish a goal, right? Yeah. Say with his spouse, that helps us to connect with you. Yes, it does. You know what I mean? It does. And even if you have different goals and you're not like, okay, I don't want to travel. I want to buy a new car. You guys mm-hmm. can work it out and find ways together. So let's see. What are some, are there any differences in spending habits or attitudes towards money? And how can people find common ground to manage their finances effectively? Any differences in our spending habits? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in a in a relationship, right? You're always going to have different spending habits or attitudes, right? And that falls back to how you're raised. Mm. You know, prime example, like I was raised where my mom hid a lot of stuff from my father. She had a separate bank account from my father, mm-hmm. right? And it was her core belief that, hey, man, I'm making money. Why shouldn't I have nice things? Or my father's belief was, hey. We need to save for a rainy day because we never know what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. My mom wanted it now or my dad was, hey, we need to save, okay? And that created a lot of problems within my parents, right? But that, I brought that into our own relationship, Mm -hmm. right? Where I don't like to tell you, and and this is something I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys, man. I I sometimes hide some stuff from my wife and I'm I'm dealing with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not completely transparent with her, right? And she has to catch me. (laughs) <laughs> and it's awful because I feel ashamed like she was talking about. Yeah. A lot of times I feel ashamed for doing so. And I have to really sit back and think back, well, why am I not disclosing this to my wife? Why do I think this is not okay? And once I break down that barrier and I start thinking about it and I do come to her and I do tell her, she's totally okay with it. She's like, man, right on. I want you to have nice things, but I yes. want you to help me make those decisions, right? Yes. I just want to be a part of it. Like, (laughs) because I'm excited about those things too. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely. And you know, it's, I think a lot of us grew up in households like that. Yeah, I think so. I think it's more common. Um, Unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with it, right? And you're going to have to have those hard conversations. Like for us, it's not easy to have these conversations. (laughs) I... Ugh, I'm like a spoiled brat. I'll be like, oh, what are you talking about? And why don't you want me to have this? Or, and it's not anything like that. It's not like that at all. I'm <laughs> like, I, that's not what I'm saying, babe. I just want to know why you didn't tell me. That's yeah. it. And then the shame <laughs> kicks in, right? And yeah. it's like, I'm getting louder because I don't want to have to hear what she has to say because I feel horrible. Yeah. But right on, guys. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. For those eager uh, for our more of this conversation, tune in for the second half of this podcast. Meanwhile, take a quick break to explore the show up shop. Discover a variety of items from t-shirts and hoodies to stickers and coffee mugs, catering to all tastes. By making a purchase, you not only support our cause, but also get a high quality product that will bring you joy. Show your support for the fathers everywhere by purchasing a show up dad shirt from our shop. Wear it proudly and show your backing for fathers globally. Visit our shop at HTTPS, the show up shop dot my Shopify dot com. Thank you once again for tuning in. Now, welcome back to the second part of this episode, being on the same page with your spouse, with your hosts, Jenny and David. We're going to be talking about family direction, right? Yes. Yes. Family direction. So if you haven't already heard the first part, you know, we, or if you missed the, the first part of this podcast, we talked about faith and finances and how important it is to be on the same page in those things. Uh, now we're going to talk about your family direction, the goals that you have, mm-hmm. where you see your family going and how important it is to be on the same page in those areas. Absolutely. Well, how do we envision our roles as parents or, or partners evolving as our family grows? And what steps, Jenny, can we take to support each other in these transitions? So I think it's really important, really important mm-hmm. for you both to discuss what roles you're going to take in the marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, we chose for me to stay home and David to work. Uh, I've never actually envisioned myself as a stay at home mom. And 
at times this role is very difficult for me, very difficult for me. But I do know, like when I look back on our life and we had our first daughter, um, the idea of putting her in childcare was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. And so that was the motivator to have me stay at home. But originally my goals were to be a career person and to really have a career and focus on a career. Uh, But it's interesting because as I went through life, my main prayer to God was always that he would protect my children. Mm -hmm. And even though the role of being a stay at home mom has been hard for me, uh, I know that my sacrifice is really paying off because our children are doing so well, so well. And the wonderful thing is, is that, and I'm so grateful is that you have taken that position and that role of provider without feeling like bugged with me or resentment towards me because I'm not providing a paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. But if you're not on the same page together in that, there can be resentments, big time resentments. This is such a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I've often heard that, um, Women will get divorced later in the marriage because they're so fed up with the role that they were forced into in the marriage. And so that's why it's so important to discuss those things. Mm -hmm. Like, are you guys going to clean the house together? You know what I mean? Those types of things like that. What do you guys want for your children? Do you want them to go into sports at an early age? Who's going to be taking the kids to sports? Who's going to be driving the kids to, you know, the private school instead of the public school? Are you going to homeschool? If you want to homeschool, who's going to stay home and do that? Mm -hmm. Who's going to sacrifice their career to be able to do that? If you're going to sacrifice one person's career, are you guys both okay with the financial drop that's going to take place? because of that and having more strict budgets. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All these different things. So it's really important if you're not on the same page and you're forcing one spouse into a role, it's going to cause problems. Absolutely. I heard it once said that anytime your dream becomes your spouse's nightmare, that's when you need to reassess the dream. Oh, it's so, that's such a powerful, powerful quote because man, Sometimes we're out there living our dream and our spouse is miserable and we have no clue. And you could tell, um, I know for us, I'm out there working hard and everything, you know, accomplishing, feeling like a man, doing, doing whatever I need to do, right? And I'd come home. And sometimes it was hard for me to tell you something I experienced. Like when I met the mayor and governor of Texas, you know, when I was working in El Paso, you know. I wanted to tell you that. And it was almost like you weren't jealous, but you were hurting because, you know, this is, that's something that you wanted to, to to fill. Right. And I just want to thank you for your sacrifice. And I think for men out there, thank your wife, man. Like truly, I, I thank you for sacrificing and choosing to stay home so that I can go out and provide for the family. I know for me, I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for you, because I can rest assured that I know that you can take care of it. You know, thank you. It's definitely a team effort. And I mean, being a stay at home mom is so hard for a person that is like myself. I'm naturally just very social. Yeah. I'm a very social, bubbly personality. I'll talk to anybody. I'm so like smiling everywhere I go. I mean, if you're a stranger in the store, I mean, you're going to be my best friend. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was definitely not jealousy, but I could definitely see how it could turn into jealousy if you don't check it. And if you don't have those conversations with your spouse, and if, if your spouse isn't empathetic, some people, I've heard some men be like, oh, well, my wife don't do anything all day. She should be grateful. I'd love to sit at home all day doing nothing. Yeah. But a lot of the time, it, it's, um, it's a big sacrifice for moms. And moms don't 
get a break. No, you don't. We work 24-7. Yeah. If the kids are sick, I mean, we just went through a sick season that was so difficult. Mm-hmm. Luke, our our young, our middle kid was sick for a month and a half. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So a month and a half of me putting everything on hold and just being and taking care of him and sleeping on like the extra mattress in in the other room, so I'm not waking anybody up and he's not waking anybody up. And I mean, it was it was yeah. brutal, brutal. But thank God I could do that. Yeah. Because what would we do with him? You know what I mean? And thank God for you going and working to be able to support me to be able to take care of him. Because nobody else would be able to do it. No. I mean, someone would have to take it off of work. Mm-hmm. Right? And then you're losing that income. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's been a blessing to have you at home. And I know it's a, it's a sacrifice. Right? But uh, it has been a blessing and it does have its perks yeah no one else is raising our kids right we are we're doing it and you know i know it's a sacrifice on your part too because you have to go to work sick yeah (laughs) i go to work sick (laughs) you don't i mean there's times where you're working sick for a long time yeah you know what i mean and you get up every day you are so faithful Mm -hmm. so faithful and going to your job when I was still in my tools, do you remember that time I was working? We're, I don't know, working a still structure, doing some transmission work. And uh, it was colder than heck, snowing, wind blowing. I'm at like 90 feet in the air and uh, doing some statics or whatever. And I remember I coughed so hard, I almost separated my rib because I was coughing. Remember, I got some kind of bug that was going around. Yes. And uh, my boss kept telling me, why are you coughing so much? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I finally went to the, the emergency room, remember, because my back was killing me. I thought I had literally broke a rib. And uh, I went in there and I had coughed so hard. I had contacted, uh, what was it, uh, walking pneumonia. Yeah, you had you had pneumonia. Yeah, you were pneumonia. working with pneumonia. Yeah, and the doctor's like, oh, my God, what are you doing? You know what I mean? So that's the sacrifice that a lot of people don't see on not only a mother, but on a father to make things work, right? And mm-hmm. and being able to, to take upon our roles, right? Mm-hmm. And how to support each other, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so important to be open to discussion on how those roles can possibly change. Mm-hmm. We, You know what I mean? Because life changes, things are going to change. I mean, maybe you, you have perfectly healthy children and then you find out that somebody ends up with a chronic illness or something and then now somebody has to quit their job or your kids are growing up and they're getting out of school and now it's time for both people to go to work yeah you know what i mean like you really have to be open to changing with how life is changing Mm -hmm. and just discussing those things it's amazing how many people don't discuss and they just plow through life and stick with the same plan. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Think this is the plan. We're not deviating from the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So in what ways, babe, can we prioritize the well-being and growth of each family member while maintaining a strong sense of unity and connection as a family unit? Well, for us, we discussed as a couple what we're going to do, our, our children have various age gaps, uh, mm-hmm. the biggest being seven years from our oldest uh, daughter to our middle son. Mm-hmm. And what we discussed was that, hey, this is her final year in high school. We're going to prioritize her, mm-hmm. right? We wanted to make it very special to her. Um, we didn't want to burn the candle at both ends with our, our boys being in sports and being all over the place. You know what I mean? We realize we've seen that from from other couples and we realize the amount of stress that causes and we didn't want that. Right. So we had discussed that. And we're like, you know, we're not going to do that to our kids. We're not going to be all over the place, putting stress on our marriage and stuff like that. But we're really going to focus this year on our daughter, Nakota. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And that's how we were able to prioritize her. Right. With the understanding that when she's done with all her sports and her 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 last year in high school, then that's going to be the time for our boys. Right? Yes. And yes. 
pouring into them and helping them to to develop right yes and i mean we still have a great relationship with our boys we prioritize their needs and things like that but because they're so young we know that they still have time for sports they still have time for you know music or you know all these things they get to do fun stuff Mm -hmm. all the time and we take them you know to scooter or whatever it is they like but it to make that commitment to Nakota, we really, I'm so glad we're on the same page on that because her schedule is insane. Yeah, it is. She is such a high performing senior. I mean, she has a 4.0 plus. Yeah. She's AP classes. She is running track. She did cheerleading. I mean, Every football game, all the extracurricular activities that they have on the weekends, um, just banquets and dances and senior trips and photos and photos and photo. I mean, we took like, yeah. I think I went through like four photo sessions for this senior year for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just it was insane. It was madness. Yeah, <laughs> and if we had the two boys in sports too, I would have probably ripped my hair out because it yeah. would have been so stressful, not only on them, but on us. Us, absolutely. And it, it benefits no one. No, it doesn't. Because then we're not at our best self. Right? right. And what are we doing? Who do we take it on? We take it on our, our children, right? Yeah. Or our spouse. Our spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I remember, uh, just thinking about it, I'm like, my gosh, I don't know how we would do it if the boys were in school or not in school, in uh, in sports. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'd be one way. We'd be the other way. We would always be separate, me and you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's something that we don't like to do. And I think when you do make a decision like that and you're prioritizing your well-being and growth for each family, that shows unity, right? Because mm-hmm. now we're showing that we're united. And that we care about our family, right? And that helps our family unit grow, I believe. I, I agree. If if we're stressed as parents, mm-hmm. your kids are really going to feel Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And sometimes as parents, we feel like we need to put our kids in all kinds of things mm-hmm. to make sure that they're going to succeed in life. But really, we need to just make sure that the messages we're sending out are positive messages because if we have them in all this stuff but life is chaotic and hectic and crazy we're teaching them to stay in this high stress state all the time their cortisol levels are going to be up all the time they're going to be getting sick easier all these things you're going to be getting sick easier they're not having fun no you know what i mean that's the point of it is for them to have fun and then to learn some to grow and develop yeah grow and development you can't really grow and develop when you're that stressed. In a constant you're not stage retaining. No. You're not retaining anything. No, I agree with you 100. percent It's it's a uh, it's a chaotic environment. I grew up in one like that, mm-hmm. and uh, all it did was cause me to thrive in chaos mm-hmm. and crave chaos. Yeah. So if I didn't have chaos in our home, I would create chaos. Mm -hmm. (laughs) right yeah you really i I did did. i created chaos in my own home because why everything was too good and i need to create a mess because why this is where i thrive and this is what i seek this is how i feel that i can go forward in life well (laughs) dad your slogan and the kids would know dad's slogan is hurry up let's go (laughs) (laughs) everything was hurry go 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 hurry 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 like even on vacation, hurry up. We got to get to the next ride. Hurry, hurry, <laughs> hurry. Like, let's just enjoy it. Be in let's the moment. Chill. Right? <laughs> Be where your feet are. You know what I mean? But it, I mean, you make such a valid point. And this is such an important topic because I know so many families that are running their kids into the ground. No, oh, it's horrible. And like you said, it doesn't become fun anymore. No, I mean, you experienced this. You went through so many sports oh. and different types of activities. By the time you were in high school, where were you at with it? I was burnt out. I started wrestling when I was six years old. Uh went from wrestling to yaffle football to, to baseball to karate to, gosh darn, what else do we do? Oh, we boxed. 
Mm-hmm. Right. In fact, our one of our first wrestling coaches was uh, was a professional boxer, and uh, he approached my father and said, "Hey, man, your your boys are are, are tough. I think they'd be good in boxing." And that's how we got involved in boxing. But uh, man, we were everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, um, constantly busy. I think for us, it was good because it got us out of our home. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's why I wanted to be in a lot of sports because my home was pretty chaotic. There was a lot of uh, violence that took place. Okay. Um, so for me, it was kind of comfortable to get out of that environment and to be around other mentors, be around other men that were actually positive, kind yeah. and positive and, yeah. and wanted to, to teach me mm-hmm. versus beat me down. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of craved that. Mm-hmm. But it did cause a lot of chaos. Um, it did cause burnout. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time I was in high school, I didn't want nothing to do with wrestling. And man, we went all over. My parents they they put me in so many different wrestling camps, mm-hmm. from Kenny Mondays to uh, John Smith's wrestling camp. We went to Oklahoma. We went to we went to Canada. You know, <laughs> we went all over the place wrestling. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the time we got to high school, I was just completely burnt out. I also recognize too that you really had a performance based absolutely type of mentality where you be- it was almost like you believed you could only receive love through performance. Yeah, look at me. Look, I'm doing good, dad. Yes. Do, I, do I have your approval? Yeah, yeah. and it, it's kind of caused in you like you work so hard and I'm so grateful, but sometimes you need to rest. Yeah. And I have to remind you of that <laughs> cuz you're always like I need to constantly be doing something. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, something that I have created in myself, right? Mm-hmm. That was something that was shown to me. And I think I've kind of continued that. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I'm also actually working on as well, because it's during those quiet times when I'm not doing anything. It's when I feel God is talking to me and he's dealing, he's doing that spiritual surgery. Mm-hmm. that I think each and every man needs, right? Yeah. I think a lot of times we fall into that busyness because we don't want to listen. Yeah. We don't want to to feel that pain yeah. in those quiet times, right? But yeah. God's actually trying to do something very magnificent in your life. He's trying to get you to to reflect and see, hey, man, I don't like that you're like this son. I need you to change yeah. your daughter, right? And he's so strategic because yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm the opposite of you. I'm real chill. Like yeah. oh, I'll get to it tomorrow, and you're like, oh, let's do it now. And <laughs> but you've taught me so much on how to be self motivated, and I've taught you so much on how to like really get grounded. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it's so important for couples to talk about these things and find a middle ground. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you definitely have to be talking about all these things and put them as a priority. Yes. Right? Yes. All right. Well, let's dive into health, Jenny. How can we communicate openly and empathetically about our health concerns and needs? And how can we ensure that we respect each other's boundaries and preferences in the matter of health? You know, health doesn't seem like it's a big deal for mm. some people, but it is a big deal if you're not on the same page. And I can give a couple of examples. Uh, Sometimes in marriages, when one person really wants to get fit or start eating healthier and things like that, and the other person is really resistant to it, it can be very difficult and cause a lot of uh, friction and um, chaos and arguments, division in the marriage. Um, Thankfully, I'm so grateful because you love my cooking and. Uh, I've recently, you know, last year just decided that I wanted to really start getting fit and you were right on board with it. And I'm so grateful. And I feel like little miss health fitness, personal chef over here, looking up all these new recipes. And I'm like, yeah, let's lose all this weight. And (laughs) And just me supporting you. I'm reaping the benefits. So (laughs) yeah, yes, but it's been so good because I don't feel bad about going to the gym or counting my calories. And we both have the same calorie app and, you know, we are both working out together. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know that's not the case with everybody. Sometimes we don't have that, you know, our spouse isn't there to support 
that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we really need to ask ourselves if our, if my spouse is trying to do better, something that will better their health, better their, the way they look. I mean, they're my spouse. I want them to look the best that they, they can. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Why are we mad? And if we're mad, we really need to ask ourselves what the insecurity is inside of us. Mm. Cause I mean, there's, I I've seen couples, um, where some person stops drinking or they, they don't want their spouse to drink, but they themselves are going to continue to drink alcohol. I know in our case, you quit drinking and so did I. Yeah. You, and you supported me. And let me tell you guys, whenever you're trying to quit something, it is so important for you to have a supportive spouse. That made it so much easier for me versus you telling me that, hey, you need to quit drinking while you're sipping a margarita. Right. I mean, oh my God, you know how crazy that would have been? Yeah, it would have been crazy. I mean, if I still had alcohol in the house because I was buying alcohol or I was going out partying with my friends or whatever and you quit drinking, mm -hmm. it would have caused a lot of problems. You would have set me for failure. Yeah, you, set me up for you failure. would have went back and you never went back. Mm -hmm. You never went back to drinking. You've been sober over 15 years, well over that. and. You know, I know that my role and my choice to not drink as well um, really helped and aided in your success. Absolutely. And I didn't, I never had a problem with drinking. Um, I could have like half a glass of wine and never want to drink more than that or have wine in my spaghetti sauce, you know, when you cook with it or whatever and have a sip and, and have no problem with wanting more. Mm -hmm. But I really felt it was so important. I really wanted you to be successful. And we should want our spouse to be successful in every area. And I think that's part of respecting your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. Having that respect to know that, hey, man, my husband or my wife have this issue. Mm -hmm. I love them so much. I'm going to sacrifice yeah. my, my wants for them. Mm -hmm. for them to be successful and that even falls back all the way to being a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. right sacrificing your wants oh i've sacrificed so many things you know what i mean <laughs> yeah but isn't that the love that we preach that uh, christianity preaches that jesus christ preaches yeah right sacrificial love dying to oneself yeah and that's what you literally are doing putting the needs of the other person ahead of yours yeah their, their well-being right yes yes so. and if you do that for each other oh man oh my gosh all your needs are going to be met you're going to just you're going to feel so great in your marriage mm -hmm. i mean there's even situations where you know maybe one spouse wants their spouse to lose weight and you know what i mean maybe they're saying not very nice things. That's not a good way to motivate no. your spouse. You no. know what I'm saying? To say mean things or tell them you need to go to the gym or whatever. I, there's better ways to do it. You can choose to start learning how to cook better for your spouse to help them because maybe they don't know how to, Absolutely. how to cook. Right. You know what I mean? There's get on, get on any of the social media, look up, high protein meals, low calorie meals. I mean, there's so much out there. Yeah. So many tools. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do to aid your spouse without having to say things that hurt them. I agree with you 100%, babe. I think the greatest motivator can and will always be love. Mm -hmm. Right? 100%. I think that that will get people more apt to, to do or buy into something right? By being supportive and showing love for that person. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great scripture that's out there that says the goodness of God causes men to repent. And I like to add that to this, mm -hmm. right? It's God's goodness, God's love. It's your love, your goodness towards your spouse that's going to cause them to turn away from the things that they are doing. Yes. You know, I think that's super, super important. So. Yes. And that all goes under, you know, encouraging and motivating our spouse how what are some other ways that we can prioritize our physical and mental will, well-being and and what healthy habits can we cultivate together as couples 
You know what I mean? To really propel your relationship into a, an alignment type mindset. Do stuff that is fun, right? I know when we first started dating and stuff like that, and then we went into our marriage, what did we do? We ran together. That was a big thing. We always ran together. We did trail runs together. Um, we even worked at a, a small rock climbing gym that one of my good friends owned, and mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of rock climbing, right? Yeah. We made it fun. Yeah. You know, so I think that's important to incorporate fun within your habits, right? And, and your physical and mental well-being. I think you should always have fun. And I think also to encourage and motivate them too, I think you got to emulate to them, right? I can't be telling you, hey, babe, you got to lose weight while I'm sitting on the couch drinking a beer. Right. You know what I mean? That doesn't motivate anybody. I think we need to both join, like you said, it, like you, you joined me, right? You supported me in my decision to stop drinking. Yeah. Right. And that's how we move forward. Right. And that's how we develop a, a healthy habit of not drinking within our family. Yeah. Right. And I think it goes the same way when we're trying to cultivate like healthy habits, such as working out together. Yeah. We've also been able to do that. Yeah. Right. By getting on the same page, you creating a meal plan for us, you know, uh, me getting us a, a membership to a gym together and yeah. stuff like that and creating time for each other. I know there's certain days I can't go to the gym, yeah. but you can go to the gym. And I'm like, all right, I'll take care of the kids or I'll go pick up our daughter or whatever. And that way you could have that time to go and work out. Yeah, I would yeah. love to go and work out with you at the time, but I understand that you need it too. And that's where communication and, and self-sacrifice comes into play. Yeah. And you've even discussed like going to the gym after work and that you'll be home a little bit later. Um, another wonderful thing. I love that you say like, having fun because. Mm -hmm. We've even implemented like date nights at restaurants for our cheat day, you know, because we're always like counting yeah. our calories, trying to reach our goals and stuff like that. But we go and we have like a cheat meal and we'll have like a juicy steak and a dessert and, you know, just really enjoy that time together. And also like if somebody's quitting drinking, find new fun things to do instead of going to the bar or find new friends or become your spouse's best friend yes. if he loses friends because he stopped drinking. You know, those things are yes. so important. Absolutely. Be supportive of each other. Well, once again, thank you. As we wrap up this insightful episode of being on the same page with your spouse, we hope that you've gained valuable insights and practical tips to strengthen your relationship. Remember, communication and understanding are key to harmonious partnership. We can encourage you to continue the conversation with your spouse and share your thoughts and work together towards a more connected and supportive relationship. Thank you for tuning in and remember to always show up for each other. Until next time, stay connected and stay on the same page.